You know, Josuke is a pretty fantastic role model. Brave, caring, and moderately intelligent. Although one of the most impressive acts I recall seeing from Josuke was when he literally smashed the subscribe button for the new world review and then used Crazy Diamond to reform it as a subscribe D button, thus granting Josuke regular JoJo content uploaded straight into his YouTube feed. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, and it's Jojo time again. But on this occasion, I would like to take the opportunity to highlight the unparalleled majesty that are the anime openings of this series. I really don't think I've ever encountered a series where I have so consistently enjoyed and been hooked by openings like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Usually it's quite a mixed bag for me and I have a very particular taste that I go for. Although to be fair with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, the openings were a very, uh, well, a very acquired taste for me. And I actually think I disliked all but one of them after seeing them for the first time. But each every one of them had this incredible power to grow on me like a festering musical wound that I had no choice but to eventually embrace. As such, with that in mind, I'm going to rank them all here today from worst to best, taking into account music, animation, context within the series, and any number of hidden fun references and or alterations that occur. The only exception to this is going to be Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town, because I do have very different feelings regarding the original and the EDM version that I think warrant being separated. And please do keep in mind, this is going to be a very, very subjective examination, as is anything that tends to involve music. And my exact ranking is likely to be very different from 99.9% .9 of you out there. So please do feel free to drop your own personal rankings in the comments below. But with that out of the way, let's begin. And coming in dead last in 10th place is going to be Bloody Stream. And I want to emphasize that despite being in last place for me, there is nothing wrong with this opening whatsoever. It just doesn't really stand up to my impression of every other opening. But what Bloody Stream really has going for it is a fantastic psychedelic exploration featuring wonderful vibrant colors and very, very fluid movement. Watching this opening is essentially as good as being on a trip. It's a marvel to view the incredible amount of work that went into every frame of it, especially the action scenes with the Pillarmen, because they have this great hand-drawn artistic quality about them. But if I had to say where Bloody Stream was lacking for me, where other openings don't, a lot of it does have to do purely with the music. It's enjoyable and catchy enough, but my personal preference in terms of music is to listen to very high energy stuff, which is kind of crazy because Bloody Stream is high energy, just nowhere near as high as every other opening. And in fact, in comparison to everything else, Bloody Stream actually seems like a delightful, peaceful reprieve. And then there's also the aspect of animation. As cool as all of the colored silhouettes are, I do think they dominate a bit too much of the opening, and there is a limit to how much silhouette work will continue to be captivating. Human beings very naturally crave to see the faces of other humans. Am I nitpicking here? Absolutely yes. But that's what I've got to do in this case, and that's why Bloody Stream has landed in this undesirable last place here today. Moving on though, we have Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town in ninth place. And it's really hard not to love this song, as much as I was kind of offset by it at first. But really, the disco vibe is just so infectious, and the aesthetic is stunning. You could take a screenshot of almost any point in Crazy noisy bizarre town and spent exorbitant amount of times just analyzing the artistic value, especially in regards to texture, which is one of the great strengths of Jojo. What this opening has going for it that no other with the exception of its alternate does is that this is the one and only opening that is focused on embodying the concept of fun, which coming immediately from Stardust Crusaders was a sudden yet welcome shift that also goes on to blend really nicely with Diamond is Unbreakable. My favorite part of it is definitely right at the beginning with Josuke, Jotaro, Okayasu and Koichi on stage followed by flying silhouettes all across Morio. It's just such a strong way to command the attention of the viewer and drop them down to earth for the more reasonably paced parts of it. So what does it lack that puts it next to last? Not a lot actually, but once again, I will identify music as a decisive factor. I just don't like this song as much as others. It's delightful, but not something that I would listen to over and over again. And that really is all there is to it. Staying within the realm of part four though, next up is Chase. So unlike the first two we've come across in this discussion, Chase is an opening that foregoes color almost entirely, choosing to adopt a very monochromatic and muted aesthetic. Couple that with the rocky music and a spinning intro. And honestly, I kind of felt like I was watching Naruto or another standard shonen for a second, which isn't to say that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean, when it comes to the song, I love it. It's exactly my sort of jam, especially the chorus. And I love the images that get coupled with it. You know, like the ones that get split into six and then the tracking shot through the alley past Remy's face. There's a lot of cool movement and some nice unique visual techniques techniques employed that makes Chase really stand apart from everything else that Jojo has to offer. What I did realize as a result of Chase though, is that I really miss the vibrant colors that had come to characterize Jojo for me by this time, and muting them was definitely cool, just didn't give me that same feeling I was looking for in the series. With this intro, Jojo feels like it's lost an element of itself to me, especially in part four, which was generally quite light and chill. So I think of everything, this is probably the most contextually oddly fitting opening, but I do still love it. I will also say that the full version of the song is far too short though. I mean, two minutes and 20 seconds just is not enough. I always find myself wanting to listen to more of it and then it's suddenly over. And so now let's briefly address seventh place, which is Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town EDM version. Yay, so copy and paste everything I said about 
about the original, but delete the part about the music, and add that this exceptional boost in energy is exactly what I was seeking. EDM is obviously not everyone's thing, but it does work for me and it adds a whole new layer of appreciation to this opening. The sound feels so much more full, and key moments like the very beginning hit me much harder. So personally, it is a huge improvement on an opening that I already liked, but I have spoken about it to death at this point, so I think it's time for Fighting Gold. In sixth place is our first foray into Golden Wind, and I actually think this opening achieves what Chase was trying to in terms of aesthetics by muting colors and creating a very serious atmosphere, but it does so much better. The colors are still vibrant enough to have that true Jojo impact, but the tone of the series, you can tell, has shifted radically from just color in this opening alone. Plus, it does get to take advantage of the Golden Wind art style, which is most certainly the best that this series has had to this point, which makes sense given that it's the most recent, but there's just such a Schmidt quality about it. Lines feel super sharp, shadows provide godlike contrast, and the animation is ever so fluid. And the song, well, it makes me want to embark on a journey across Italy to become a gang star. So it does exactly what it needs to do, and the chorus is extremely powerful. I mean, the first time Fighting Gold gets sung and the music kicks back in, I can just feel it in my soul. A pretty damn perfect opening, and yet we still have five more to go. So now let's step all the way back into part one for Sono Chi no Sadame. And this is probably one of the more prime candidates of an opening that took me quite a bit of time to adjust to, but that's for many, many reasons. Firstly, this piece of music is incredibly bold in its auditory extravaganza, so it can be a bit of an assault on the senses, as is the general art style of Jojo, which has this mixed manga and 3D identity happening. The 3D is probably what put me off quite a bit, especially with parts like the close-up on Erina. However, with that said, this opening is a triumph of anime. It is a truly captivating piece with incredible camera work, like the statue that spins and then becomes the hand with the stone mask, or even the simplest stuff like Dio jumping off the stairs, and it all synergizes entirely with the music. Big actions are accompanied by big beats, and I just love it. And it only becomes stronger with every rewatch. And I should also say that in retrospect, having engulfed all there is of eight parts of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, I do also really appreciate the beginning with all the manga shots. Like I love the little Jojo countdown they do, from Jolene all the way to Jonathan, and how things get kicked off in this very first opening. But moving along, it's time for number four, which is from part four, and it will be Great Days. And I would say that this is probably the most Jojo of all of the Jojo openings that has ever Jojoed. Bright colors, massive cast of characters, cool camera shots, weird stuff in general. And it is the first example of an opening on this list where the main antagonist gets their chance to take it over with Yoshikage Kira managing to break the fourth wall and rewind the opening which almost legitimately jump scared me when it happened. Guess there's a sinister click noise and then a bit of lag before it all starts. And it's all just incredibly unsettling and unexpected of an anime opening. But all in all, there's just something really charming about Great Days to me. It's kind of like a culmination of everything that part four has to offer. And in a weird way, it felt like a cool natural escalation to the tale of Morio. It's very weird musically. I don't think I've ever heard anything quite like it, nor have I ever seen anything like it. So it absolutely carves its own space in my mind. To number three though, it is Traitor's Requiem. And as of right now, it is the final Jojo opening available to us. And it's a pretty damn strong way to go out. I'll say that. It has this interesting mixture of features going on, one of which is that it begins in a really soft and serene place, which I wouldn't have thought would work, but it did suit Golden Wind quite nicely. And thankfully though, it does swiftly kick into energy, which is the drug I crave so much. Of course, it also features probably the most insane villain takeover we've seen with Diavolo and King Crimson, but not only that, eventually Jorno gets to strike back and retake his own opening with Gold Experience Requiem. So this opening is a supremely cool journey across three different incarnations to tell a story. And I am all about that chorus. As soon as I hear that Zetsubo, everything just feels like it's on. Highest stakes drama imaginable. Love this opening, although I do wish it had retained a bit more of the fighting gold aesthetic, but who even cares? Reaching the top now and in second place is End of the World. And might I say, this is a very strange thing for me to be stating, because of every opening in the series, I don't think I had a worse initial reaction to one than this. I actually vividly remember hating this opening when I first saw it. Mostly, yes, because of the song. Hearing it initially, it just sounded like a musical wank. A gigantic mess, the pacing is all over the place, the voices are over-dramatized, and why the hell are they just yelling, ora, 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 this, this is not music. Or so I thought. Like everything else, this one really grew on me. It grew on me a lot. And as I got used to the song, I was actually able to appreciate the visuals and magnificent storytelling that is happening all the way throughout. And then of course, this is the very first experience of an opening interrupted, in this case by Mr. Dio, which was quite the moment. Just seeing him silently walk behind Jotaro and restart the opening was an experience that makes getting into Jojo entirely worth it all on its own. And over time, I've not only grown accustomed to, but I really love the song as well, which just, it should not be possible. I still think it's more or less an abundance of noise, 
but these days more pleasant and energetic noise. And with but one remaining, I now present my favorite JoJo opening, which is Stand Proud. This is the only opening that I loved after seeing it for the first time. In fact, I knew I was going to love it pretty much in the first few seconds. I'm not musically adept enough to explain what it is about this song, but it is just perfectly in tune with my tastes. And the visuals only accentuate that, especially any time where we have a legacy shot, like the beginning with Jonathan and Joseph and then finally landing on Jotaro, or the part where the singers literally go, Jojo, 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 and we cycle through the three Jojos again. And in fact, every visual aspect of Stand Proud hits me powerfully. I could talk about probably quite literally every shot, whether it's Jotaro absorbing all the characters relying on him, or the shot running through the cards, or even the end with Star Platinum endlessly punching in time with the music, and it's just, uh, it is everything. There is not a single thing that I dislike about Stand Proud. To me, it is absolutely perfect, and that's why it is, and likely always will remain, my favorite opening of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. But what do you guys think? Please do let me know in the comments below, and if you're keen for some more JoJo content, then please do check out some of my other videos, or even subscribe to the channel for regular JoJo wonder delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review, and I'll see you next time.